Got hunchback and forward head posture? Let's look at a simple exercise to help you fix it. I'm Matt Chu from Upright Health, where we help you move beyond your limitations so you can live with confidence. Be sure to scroll down to the description box for helpful links to help you with your posture. And while you're down there, do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. If you have hunchback posture, you probably also have forward head posture to go with it. The curvature of your upper back influences the way your head and neck sit. So you definitely want to be dealing with exercises that help you straighten out the upper back and also reposition the head and neck over the spine. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you a simple exercise that you can do anywhere with no equipment to help you reposition your head and neck and train those muscles to stabilize that better position. And if you watch to the end, I'm gonna show you a way to progress the exercise to strengthen your neck muscles even more. And all it requires is an inexpensive piece of equipment that you can fit in your pocket. To do this exercise, you're gonna take your hands and interlace your fingers. You're gonna put your head and neck in as neutral position as you can. And it may feel a little awkward because you're used to being here. So you're just gonna try to tuck your chin, keep your eyes on the horizon and pull your head and neck back a little bit. Then you're gonna take your hands and put your interlaced fingers together behind your head. So I've got my hands like this right here locked behind my head. And then I'm just gonna pull back into my hands. My hands are gonna provide a resistance point so I'm not allowing my head and neck to move, right? I'm contracting the muscles around my neck, but I'm not actually moving anywhere. And then I can relax it. So I'm counting to about three. When you first start, you don't need to go hard. You just wanna feel like you're pushing back this way. So it's similar to the chin tuck that you may have seen in other videos, but we're adding resistance to this to make these muscles work. So the hands create a blocking force, and then we're just pushing back into the hands. Now, as you get better at feeling these muscles working, you can hold the contractions for longer than three, just adjust based on what you can handle. Probably like a count of 10 is probably more than enough. And then you can go ahead and relax. Now, as you get better and better at controlling these different positions, you're gonna be able to get further and further back into that really stacked aligned position. And that's your goal. So you just wanna keep working towards getting to that aligned position over time and not force it and like try to get as far back as you can. You just wanna gradually go in stages. If you're here this week, maybe next week you'll be back just a little bit further and maybe the week after that you'll be back even further. I generally have my clients use this exercise for two to three sets of five to 10. And as you get more and more comfortable with it, you can keep doing it throughout the day to help counteract the effect of sitting at the computer or looking at your smartphone or playing video games or whatever it is you're doing. One thing you wanna watch out for during this exercise is compensation in the muscles of your low back. So sometimes people will take their hands, put them behind their head, and then pull their head back. And while they're doing that, the low back muscles are also creating extension down here. So they're getting anterior tilt, they're getting into this lordosis because they're using these muscles and pairing that with activity here. So it's hard sometimes to get the coordination to separate neck muscles in extension and lower back muscles in extension. So to trick your muscles to separate their functions, you're going to take your feet and just separate them out so you have a wider stance or a longer stance anyway. So you have one foot forward, one foot back, and then you just keep your abs engaged and then pull your head and neck back into your hands. That way your pelvis is already put in a more uh, neutral locked position. So your low back is not gonna be able to pull as much and your abs can help keep that pelvis stabilized as you keep that contraction going. If you wanna get even more stable in your head and neck position, then you can also change the directions of the contractions you're using. So as I've shown you already, we're doing this posteriorly directed contraction, right? We're just trying to bring the head and neck back. Once you've started to get your head and neck into a pretty neutral position, you can then start using contractions to the side. So you can put your hand on the side of your head and then work on shifting your head into the hand. Again, not actually letting it get anywhere. So you're building control in this neutral position, shifting laterally. So then you start using muscles along the side of your neck 
you can do it to the right side and I'm gonna push that way. The same kind of rules apply. I'm just building control here. Now, over time, as I get better and better at building control, I can maybe experiment with building control in positions that aren't neutral and natural because sometimes, you know, I need to turn my head and twist my head and look around and I want my neck to be strong enough to handle that when I need to do that. So first we want to start with getting head and neck in neutral, strengthening those positions, and then we can start playing with other positions once your head and neck is in neutral and you can start going sideways, you can go diagonally back, diagonally back, sideways, I can even go forward if I want to. Just getting the muscles all around the neck used to firing in different directions with the head and neck in a neutral position. For all these different directions, the same rules for sets and reps apply. You gotta listen to your body and just adjust based on how it feels, but starting off with two to three reps of five to 10 for three second contractions and gradually building up should work out pretty well for most people. But again, pay attention, see what your body says, see how it responds and adjust accordingly. If you can handle more, go for it. Just gradually increase how many times you're doing it as long as you feel like it is helping you. Now you have a quick and easy antidote to hunchback posture and forward head posture that you can use throughout the day. If you have forward head posture or hunchback posture, you probably already saw this head and neck retraction exercise, this chin tuck exercise that everybody talks about for trying to correct forward head posture. Now, maybe you saw it in a chiropractor's office or a PT or a trainer showed it to you, or maybe you read about it in a comic book or something about forward head posture. But in any case, if you've tried it, it was probably kind of frustrating because you noticed that like, yeah, I can do this, but then it requires so much mental effort throughout the day this doesn't really seem to stick and it's not really holding. So how is this exercise with the hands behind our head any different? The chin tuck exercise isn't bad. It's just that it's not good enough to accomplish what most people are looking for. It's really good to just help you reestablish that control and get that coordination of these muscles so that you know what direction you're trying to go. But because there's no resistance to the motion, those muscles don't really get much stronger than just being able to do this when you ask for it. So imagine, for example, if I wanted to strengthen my arm muscle here, my biceps, and I just started doing bicep curls like this, and I just took my hand through this range of motion, I kept bending the elbow, extending the elbow. I wouldn't really build much muscle mass and muscle strength because I'm not fighting against resistance. I'm just using body weight. That's the same thing here. I'm just positioning my head, but that's not really challenging those muscles to get stronger. In order to get the arm to get stronger, this bicep muscle has to be fighting against some kind of resistance so that it realizes that, hey, I need to get better at this and get much stronger at this because for some reason, somebody keeps applying resistance to me. So that's why we need to have something behind our head and neck so that we can push into it and generate force with the muscles of the back of the neck. Now that you understand the importance of resistance in building strength in muscles, let's make the exercise a little bit more challenging. So we can grab a training band, some sort of a rubber band or one of those PT elastic bands. I'm using a pull-up band. I'll leave a link in the description and you can put it just behind your head like this. So you just have it grasped in your hands, put the band behind your head, and then you're just pulling forward and you're not letting your head get slingshotted forward, right? So you have the band behind your head, you're pulling forward, and then your head and neck is pulling back, right? So we've got resistance now. We have this force that's actually actively trying to pull your head forward and you are fighting with that. Now, you can adjust the resistance by choking up or choking down on the band. So if I go wider grip, the band isn't pulling quite as hard. So I can make sure that my head and neck is capable of handling whatever level of resistance that the band is providing. As I want it to get harder and harder, I can get even narrower, the band starts pulling harder, and I gotta really work to get there. Now, I wouldn't suggest trying to do a maximum effort thing with the band here. You wanna just use a tolerable, manageable amount of resistance here and just pull into it. 
I actually prefer to have a little bit more distance so that the band has more stretch and more available stretching distance so that it doesn't feel like I max out the band's elasticity, right? So if I go super narrow, it's almost like I'm gonna be running into a wall. Of course, it depends on you. If you're like an NFL linebacker and you're doing stuff to really build up your neck a ton, you do what you gotta do. Uh, but if you're just starting out with this, go easy on yourself. Just get yourself a little bit of resistance here and then out you go. You can, of course, modify this as you wish. You could go sideways like so. You could go diagonally like so. You could wrap this around your head and then you've got yourself a really cheap, easy Halloween costume. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it useful and educational. Be sure to scroll down to the description box for helpful links to help you with your posture. While you're down there, click the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of our videos on hunchback posture. Share this video with somebody you know who's got forward head and hunchback posture. As always, I hope you remember, pain sucks, life shouldn't.